All right, so today is a important day. We get to do something like this. So we get to put our mailbox in today. So we got all the supplies here because of the, the way the route is gonna be. The post office told us that we have to be on the other side of the street. So it's gonna be over here somewhere. So I have to dig down in the post hole put concrete in, all that type of good stuff. So while we're doing, or while I'm doing that, Andre is getting the string trimmer and is gonna knock down some of our lovely crabgrass we got growing over here. And hopefully the bugs will leave me alone. Can't tell if that's a wasp or a dragonfly or whatever, but part of the joys of being out in the country. So when I dig the post out, set the concrete in, it's got a cure for a little bit, then we'll go inside the house and I'll give you the updates then. Okay, that took less than 20 minutes to do. There's the ground right there. It helps that you're not in any type of clay whatsoever. So, we have two 50 pound bags of sacrete in there, dump some water on top. It's fast curing. So in about 30 minutes, we'll come back out, make sure that it's good and nice and firm and we'll finish up so this dirt here is what's down about three feet so it's just layers of thicker sand so what i'm going to do now is we're going to go into the house go around the house while we're waiting and then when we're done with that i'm going to take a little break to finish waiting uh, while we're coming up here Andrea went and mowed all of this part over here with our string trimmer. So that's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like right now. So hopefully we can keep the crabgrass at bay for a little while. It looks like instead of getting a full-blown tractor right now, to save some money so we can spend money on other things that are needed like a storage building and whatnot. A uh, friend of ours has a little itty bitty riding lawnmower. When I mean itty bitty, it's like 30 inch blade. But it's a riding lawnmower and she said she'd give it to us for 250 bucks. So considering a decent one was gonna be about five thousand to ten thousand dollars especially if you wanted to have any type of uh, attachment equipment on it i think we'll just suck up to 250 dollars right now and go from there so then we can spend money not go into any more debt because that's the highest priority other than this property we don't want to have any debt at all so that's going to be a good start and then at a later date, when we can afford it, then we can get a big toy that I can play around with in the yard and be happy with. So let me open the door and get inside and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the unit this week. And the biggest thing is we have power. So, Ori Electric said that they would come out between 7 and 10 business days. Day 7 was Wednesday, and they were out here Wednesday. And they went ahead and hooked up all the power. Then the mobile home company people came in either Thursday or yesterday and hooked up the AC so we have AC now. So the place is pretty much ready. They still have to do the final stuff like disconnect the refrigerator and the range and everything. And we still don't have water until that well is done. We're not able to get a um, CO so we can't move in. There's our nice nipple lights which will be 
removed as soon as we get in because we're gonna put ceiling fans in their place. But by code, you gotta have some sort of light. Here's the master closet. It's got two uh, can lights in there. So this is a nice big master closet. And that's the water heater uh, room right there. So instead of having a separate room with a door, they just put a panel on it. Since you very rarely, if ever, have to actually access the water heater. All right. In here is the master bathroom. They only have one light in, but you know, lights are cheap. We can get that later. I think these mirrors are starting to warm up on me, but I don't know yet. It would, it's either this or is the 1980s special to where it was one big piece of glass throughout the entire uh, wall, which we did not want. We had that at the house and we hated it. Here's the shower head with a nice rain faucet or shower head. And it's actually up really, really high. So even somebody like me that always complains about shower heads not being high enough, this one's high enough. Here's Andrea's tub that she had to have. She had to have that big tub. So she got it. Let me turn these off. And <sighs> see, we already looked in the kitchen. Those vertical blinds right there are coming out the day that we move in. We hate vertical blinds with a passion, so we're going to remove them. So we don't know what we're going to put in that spot yet, but we're going to remove those. There's the screen for the door. We still don't have the stairs in the back yet, so I'm sure that screen is probably going to be one of the last things that is done. We have our little hallway here, and yep, got a can light in the hallway, and I wonder, this switch here should hit the hallway. No, it does not. So there's only one switch going to the hallway, which is on the other side, which doesn't make any sense, but oh well. But these three, all right, that hits these kitchen lights. The middle one hits the four dining room lights and the one far away hits the one over the island. So that's interesting. And then there's a separate light over the sink, which I like because in the apartment right now we have, uh, how should I say it? We have four suns worth of light and there's no way to dim it. So you either get all or nothing. And I just looked now, I probably had my finger in the stupid camera, so yay on that. All right, this is probably the most important room of the entire place. This is my office. So I get my one window. After we move in, we, there's a special type of film that you can get, which blocks out like 90% of the ambient light, 95% or something to where you can still see through it, but it doesn't bring any light in. And I'm like a semi-vampire when it comes to working on the computer, so I hate light that I can't control, so that'll be great for me. And so then you have Andrea's office here, which the depth of the offices and the closets and everything are the same between the two bedrooms. Hers is just a foot wider than mine. So, there we go. And even though we told them not to put the shelves in, they put the shelves in anyway, so, oh well. All right, secondary bathroom is what it is. There's some condensation on that window. It was extremely foggy out when we came up here this morning. Uh, let me look out back here, and there might still be fog at the swamp. And in case you didn't hear, there's no little pitter-patter of feet all over the place. That's because with Andrea mowing, and with us, and with me digging post holes in the street, we knew that the dog would be all over where he was not supposed to be, and he is very bad at listening. So we did not bring him back today. 
So let me zoom in. The swamp is over here. This is what I'm zooming to. So there's a little bit of the fog left. When we got here, which was about 20 minutes ago, it uh, the fog had topped the trees over there. And when we had to go through the swamp to get here, of course, it was pretty bad. All right, there's the trench that the electric company did. And so you got to pay $200 to do an underground line all the way from the tower over there to the electric pole all the way over to here. And if it was more than that, it was dollar a square foot. So we maxed it out at about 197 feet. So we got our $200 worth. Then if you see here, let me zoom in, hopefully without screwing anything up too bad. There's the transformer. So that transformer right there was not there a week ago. So that transformer is what's going to be powering our house. So... The house over there, that house is a hundred years old. Uh, they just finished like two year renovations. They were actually living out of an RV that was near that container over there. See that container, that blue container? There was an RV right next to it and that's what they were living out of for two years while they were getting that house renovated. So, yippee for them. Um, while I'm out here, Here's our compressor, and the furnace and everything is installed by the uh, mobile home uh, manufacturer, but the compressors are always bought locally, because depending on where it actually goes in the country, and even though this is manufactured in Alabama, it is actually, there's dealers in California and stuff, so they can crisscross the entire country with them. So, depending on what climate you're in, the compressor itself is different. So, the local dealers do the compressors. There's charts in the HUD manuals and all that for what size of compressor you need. According to what it said, that's a three and a half ton unit, which is ironic because the house... This is about 1,500 square feet. The house that we sold last year was 2,400 square feet, and that had a three and a half ton unit. So I don't know. So either we read it wrong, or that's actually a pretty beefy unit. So I wanted to show you this. Here's the P-trap for the condensate line. So no bugs or anything. We'll get into that, at least in the summertime. And as soon as we close, we already have the water sealer out. We already bought the water sealer. So we're going to water seal these, all these stairs. So yippee for me. So we'll do either one or two at a time because that water seal has to dry for a few days. And so I think that's it. Hopefully in the next week or so, we'll know about the well. They might be coming out. Okay, it looks like that's on the outside. So that's not the worst thing in the world. That's probably, since they just conditioned the place, that's probably what that is. Uh, the main thing I wanted to make sure is it's not on the inside in between the two panes of glass, but it doesn't look like it is, so that's good. All right, enough distractions, and so hopefully next week we'll have the well uh, at least started, and there's our electrical panel right there. So what I'll do now is I'll finish up the mailbox when that gets done curing, and then we'll finish up the video. All right, mailbox is in. Bugs are out in full force. And this is our lockable mailbox. So the mail goes in here, falls in down on the bottom. We pick it up. Anything that's too big for that, which is pretty much any package, goes into here. That's an extra large mail package. So it should 
be good. Then the other slot is going to be for Andrea's mother when she gets here. She'll have the same one as the middle one. So I have two lockables and one package. And then any package that's big enough that doesn't fit in there, we'll worry about it at that point, like dog food. So, here's all the grass cutting. So we're able to get the crabgrass down some. Uh, it'll probably be back in full force. So, hoping we can keep this at bay until we're able to seed it with Bahia grass. And then hopefully the Bahia grass can come in here and choke out all this crap. So, but this crab grass is better than what was here before, which was that stuff. So that stuff was getting to be about three, four feet tall when they went and bush hogged this. So the crab grass, as soon as that came down, crab grass took over. So over there is what it looked like before they bush hogged it. So that's it for today. Hopefully we'll have more news in a week or so. Maybe even a, a well drilling equipment out here next weekend. Who knows? Maybe it'll be done by next weekend. So that's it for this weekend. I'm about to sweat to death because it's only like 75 degrees in here, but humidity is about 150%. So that's South Carolina for you. So everybody have a good day.